Hey everyone, and thank you for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're going to talk about the S&P 500 bear markets, and we're going to be comparing the current one to bear markets of the past. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We have several different tiers, as always, including a free one. Links in the description below. Make sure you check it out. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've been following this bear market for quite some time. And the first sort of caveat that we have to say is that until we put in a new low, you're, you're still going to have to face the, the potential reality of, of it just being the, 22, the 2022 bear market, right? There's no clear, you know, when you look at the current bear market isolated, until we put in a new low, then there's no guarantees, right? There's simply no guarantees. Now, with, with where we sit with, with you know, a, a sustained rate hiking cycle by the Fed and, and it looks like the economy is getting weaker, it would suggest that we're likely going to put on a new low eventually or at least come back down and retest the lows. But until it actually happens, you do run the risk of, of it sort of just being a, a 2022 bear market. But what we're going to do is talk about this bear market in the context of prior ones and what that would look like. Now, if you compare this one to the financial crisis, we've deviated from that quite a bit. And so this analog has no longer held like it once did. But it's important to remember that this bear market is going to look different than all of the bear markets we look at in this video. The point is not to say that it's going to follow any single one of them. The point is to say, look, this is what happened in the past. And if it happened then, it could happen now or some derivative of what happened then could happen now, you should be you should be prepared for it. If you compare this one to the dot-com crash, it's starting to take on some similarities. You can see the dot-com crash actually rolled over at this point into a recession. It peaked at its, you know, around 421 days. If the S&P doesn't put a new high, then you could say it, it hit it hit it on 390, uh, 395 days. So the S&P at this point is when it, in the dot-com crash, is when it rolled over, maybe give it another couple of weeks is when it actually started to roll over into a recession. So that is what you kind of have to be on the lookout for is, is this going to happen? Are we rolling over into a recession or are we not? You know, will, will, will the market just kind of go sideways for a while? An example of a sideways market that would be equivalent to sort of a soft landing would be if we were to follow the 46 to 49 bear market where yeah, maybe we go lower, but we sort of just scrape the lows for a few years. And soft landings aren't really that great for, I think, investors because you end up just going sideways for typically for years because, you know, there's there's enough liquidity in the system to sort of prop up the prices, but not enough to really support much higher valuations um, just because there's, you know, there's so much weakness in the economy. So this is sort of what I would consider to be equivalent to a hard landing if we were to follow a path like we did in 40, you know, from 46 to 49, which was also, of course, a period of high inflation coming out of World War II. But there's another example during a period of high inflation, 73 to 74, where we followed this path and we went sideways for a while, right? In 73 to 74, we kind of went sideways for a while. And then eventually we, we, we entered into a new, a new phase of the bear market. You kind of have your first leg down, a sideways market for a long time, and then a second leg down into a recession. And so this was sort of what I would consider to be a hard landing if, if the S&P were to follow something like this, where it kind of just slowly bleeds for a few months, and then the selling picks up as you get further on into the year into a final capitulation. This would be a hard landing. And the reason why you might argue that this is, is, is potentially more ideal for some investors who, you know, who are prepared for it is because if you take it out to the next peak, right, you can still make quite a bit of money. Right. Even if, you know, even if you're buying at these levels, in fact, as long as you as long as you give it time, normally the market comes back. Um, but then another one to compare it to, of course, is is the bear market that we had from, say, like 56 to 57. And let me just take it to the bottom. Right. In this case. The bottom, I mean, we sort of rallied up for a while, almost to a new all time high. And then we capitulated. Right. If you go look at, at what happened in, 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 in that year. We almost hit a new high, right? But then we didn't. So imagine if that were to happen for the S and P 500, where where we just sort of continue a slow rally for a while, and then everyone gets excited and calls for a breakout to to much higher prices, only for us to capitulate down and put in a new low. 
Like that's also a, a, a potential outcome as well. And, and something actually had, like that happened in '87. I think we rallied for like a lot of the year, and then at the end of the at the end of the year, I think in October maybe we saw a massive capitulation. We might actually have it on here, and and we can look at this. So here was here was what happened in '87 when that when this was actually during the during the bear market. It was a massive capitulation that had you know that was sort of preceded a or, or came after a, a fairly attractive run up um, that might have had people thinking that the prior low was in. So. These things can break down quite quickly. We actually had a similar bear market like this that even was quicker during uh, 2020, right? It, it came down even quicker, but but ultimately bottomed at around the same level, and then we we ended up going you know much higher. So the reason we look at these again is to show us what can happen, not what has to happen. And if you take all of the prior bear markets and just sort of look at at the the most the, the extremes to the upside and the downside that did continue to put in new lows, not the ones that were in the recovery phase. This is where we are, right? So there have been prior bear markets that reached out to sort of a drawdown from the prior all-time high, even slightly higher than where we are right now. But they still ultimately continued in their bear market form. If this breaks above here and continues to go higher, then you, you start to get into the idea, well, is it a recovery? And I know there's a lot of people that already think it's a recovery and are calling for new highs, and hey, they could be right. But there's also this idea, too, that there's been plenty of bear markets before that were also around these levels that ended up putting in new lows. And, and I think you have to consider that as you as you continue to navigate the, um, the equity-verse. The, the thing to remember, and I, I, I want to draw your attention to this because it can be somewhat negative to just think sort of the, the downside. When you compare things even to the dot-com crash, or let's say you compare it to the financial crisis, right? Look what happened after it. You know, look what happened after the financial crisis. It, it just makes it look like it's... It's just sort of a blip on the um, on the map, and then you you go up to much higher prices. This again was more equivalent to a hard landing, and again look at at seventy three to seventy four. Not as impressive as what happened after the financial crisis, but still a hard landing and still pretty impressive rallies to to new highs. And 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 take a look at um, you know the dot com crash, right? After it crashed. We then rallied up, and, and then we, of course, had the financial crisis, right? We rallied into the financial crisis. But still, I mean, yes, it was a, it was a brutal bear market, but eventually the market turned around, right? And eventually it, it went up to new highs. Part of the reason we go to new highs is not always because all the companies are, 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 are doing much better. Sometimes that's the case to some degree, but also there's just more money printing, right? And, and when you have more money printing, asset valuations are going to go higher. You know, I mean, if, if, if they print another several trillion dollars, then you have to imagine some of that's going to make its way to the stock market and lead to higher valuations. So it's one of the reasons why the market goes up is as unfortunate as it is. Uh, that's sort of the, the, the nature of it. So I, I did just want to provide a brief update here on, on equities. Hopefully this is insightful for you in, in navigating financial markets. Again, there's no guarantees with any of this stuff. And I, I don't want anyone to think that this bear market is going to follow any specific analog of prior bear markets. They will likely deviate. And, and you can see that so far, it kind of looks like the dot-com crash, but also so far, it kind of looks like 46 to 49, where it didn't, uh, sorry, not for, yeah, let me compare this. So it, it sort of looks like the 46 to 49 bear market, but you could also say it looks like the dot-com bear market that ended up taking a completely different shape. It's hard to know exactly which way it's going to break. It's hard to know if it's going to be a soft landing or a hard landing. History shows us that hard landings are more likely than soft landings. History also shows us that hard landings give investors amazing opportunities that they don't, they don't come around very often. So you have to consider all of these potential outcomes, right? This is what, this is what a, a hard landing would look like, in my opinion. This is what a soft landing would look like, in my opinion, right? Take your pick. I think you're you're likely going to see one of these play out. You know whether it's a soft landing or a higher landing. I think you're going to see. Still, we'll, we'll have to retest. I think some of these lower prices eventually, or we'll put in new lows, um, which would be more more similar to a hard landing. And it kind of depends on on just how bad how how aggressive the Fed gets and how long it takes to remove liquidity from the system and how how quickly inflation comes back down. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Um, we also do have Into the Cryptoverse Premium. In, at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.